after Thursday evening talk, the Wisdom in Action talk. And today's topic is from emotional intelligence to spiritual intelligence. <clears throat> And is there anyone for the first time today? At the center, no one is for the first time. <laughs> and Zoom, anyone for the first time? Do I need to introduce the Brahma Kumaris or is that? Understood? <laughs> Maybe just a few words. The Brahma Kumaris is an international organization who teaches Raj Yoga meditation. And Raj Yoga is a philosophy of life and understanding that we are all spiritual beings and that there is a spiritual dimension to life. And if we live with that spiritual awareness, we will approach life differently. And so there are many uh, <clears throat> themes that are um, taught um, as part of Raj Yoga, and there is also the component of meditation. It is an institution that started in the 1930s in present-day Pakistan. At that time, it was part of India. And gradually over time, it has expanded outside of India. And the centers in the US started in the 1970s. And here in New York, there have been centers since 1974, I think. <clears throat> and all over the US, there are about 42 centers where we teach meditation and uh, understandings of Raj Yoga in different ways and forms. And today, this, the Thursday, is a lecture that actually introduces spirituality and gives you an idea how spirituality can be made, uh, how spirituality is relevant for our everyday life. And from different angles, it is approached. My name is Rona, Rona Schweitz, and I've been studying and practicing with the Brahma Kumaris since the early 1990s, about 30 years. And I'm here in Manhattan for the past six, seven years. I was in Europe before and in the Caribbean, which was quite adventurous and very pleasant. <laughs> I know New York City. It was maybe the biggest adventure. <laughs> it is. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so today's topic uh, from emotional intelligence to spiritual intelligence, how to face life challenges with stability and clarity. Maybe before we venture into that, we can start with a minute of silence and you just reflect for yourself, what is my emotional stability like and what can help me be more stable? Just a, a minute or so. <clears throat>
Thank you. <clears throat> so when you think about this word, emotional stability, what is it that you think about? What is it that come to mind? Comes to mind. When you have healthy emotions, do you mind using the mic so that the zoomers can also hear? And even here, they cannot hear you. <laughs> it, a kind of emotions, uh, I mean, emotions are like normal, mm -hmm. uh, like, uh, but to have a, like a healthy uh, regulation of the emotions, you have to have like emotion validation. Mm. means like if you're angry that means something is bothering you and then you just have to like instead of reacting try to have a space for the emotion and like I take a deep breath and try to understand you know the meaning deep down meaning for that and then you can have a skillful action okay think Very about good. it and then you can if it's somebody is like somebody said something or whatever so you can just, uh, instead of reacting, you can have a skillful action. If you take a deep breath and, you know, try to <laughs> try to calm yourself and then find the deep down meaning for you, mm. why, it so, why, why it bothers you so much and what's the deep down meaning. And then you can have a healthy communication with the person. Okay, very good. Any emotion, it's like... Mm. This, those are like normal, mm. but in our culture, this kind of, you're not supposed to show your emotions. Mm. You know, like that's like, oh, but. Maybe one thing to mention at this moment in time, emotion does not necessarily mean negative. Okay. Does not necessarily mean negative. I mean, uh, uh, anger may be a negative or a destructive emotion. But there are also positive emotions like enthusiasm or, or um, what is the word? I can't find the English word for it. <laughs> um, joy, for example, that is also an emotion, but that is a more constructive emotion, a healthy emotion. So one thing is to be able to distinguish between negative or destructive or, or not beneficial emotions and beneficial and constructive, uplifting emotions. Okay, anyone else? What, um, what is needed to be emotionally stable? because yeah, it's, like mm -hmm. the parents they teach the kids you are not supposed to like show your emotions like mm -hmm. so the kid is kind of conditioned mm -hmm. by that it's like an abnormal thing to show the emotion mm -hmm. emotions are like a normal thing that is totally like culturally conditioned okay. it's like yeah if you show your emotion that's like oh she's she or he is emotional, you know. No, it depends on what kind of yeah, emotion. If you react, if of course, joy, yeah. then I nobody would oppose to that. Yeah, if you mm. react it, that's a bad uh, action. Mm. But if you take a skillful, you know, action, I think then the emotion will be regulated in the brain also. They have the limbic system to regulate the emotion. Mm. Otherwise, it will be disrupted, emotion okay. regulation. Okay. Anyone else? Any thoughts? Can... 
I think maybe one thing is would be to not have an emotion control you. Um, okay. Anger comes to mind first. <laughs> and uh, I heard someone, maybe some guru said or something that he gets mad, but the emotion passes through as if you you take your finger through the water. And so I think to not have any emotion control you uh, would be a good thing. Very good. Yeah. So one way for that is to observe the emotion or observe the, the deeper feeling and kind of not identify with it. It is there, it will come and it will go. So you don't kind of get all uh, hyped up about it. You see this is coming up and you know it will pass also. That is a very nice way to, to deal with it if it comes up. Anyone else? Yes, sister. Emotional stability. One more thing with non-identification, equanimity. Mm. Sorry, we did not hear. Equanimity. 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 Along with non-identification yeah. with the emotions. Very good. I was sitting here thinking about emotional stability and being mindful of the positive and negative emotion. Mm -hmm. And at the moment that the negative emotion kicks in, to be mindful of a tool or technique to sort mm -hmm. of neutralize it. I think you touched on it by saying step yeah. away from that. Yeah. That's one emotion. Uh, and yeah. in a busy place like New York, you, you test it even <laughs> on the subway ride here. So you you develop techniques and, and it's a practice yeah. uh, that you should keep in, and you work on an instant response to it, whether it's be stepping away or just taking a deep breath, pause before you react yeah. and just think about it. So that Very came good. to mind for me. Very good. Anyone else? What is needed, required to be emotionally stable? Emotions and feelings, they are quite close connected. Ne? Just feelings are usually a bit deeper and emotions are, uh, what is it, strong, but more on the surface. <clears throat> so they are quite connected. Say, want to say anything? Anyone else? Uh, how about self respect and courage? If there is self respect and if there is courage, definitely there will be much more emotional stability, of Thanks. course. Because if there is self respect, there will be much more, uh, what is it, value for the self. So you will not easily go into destructive feelings or destructive behavior or self-undermining behavior. And if you're courage, courageous, it is much less likely that you will avoid or suppress. So you will just, <laughs> very good. Hmm? Thoughts and emotions, thoughts and of course, thoughts and emotions are definitely connected. You should talk. Mm -hmm. uh, I think when you have a space for the emotion and thoughts, then you'll be able to like see as a third person and like analyze. But when you personalize and then you the emotions will be exaggerated, you know, like uh, everything. So, I mean, it depends on the things like, you know, you give a meaning for the thought, right? Like mm -hmm. when somebody says something and you personalize mm -hmm. and you give a meaning and then you will be upset. You but don't some really... thoughts don't have meaning. Huh? Some emotions don't some, have. <laughs> uh, not the thoughts. thoughts. It's completely useless. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we just give more meaning for the thoughts and you know like that's how it is. let's go over to the board and sometimes it helps to sketch things then you get a bit more clear 
So let's try and see the map of our inner world or our inner kingdom so that we can get more grasp on this uh, emotional stability, emotional intelligence. And uh, then the next step, what is spiritual intelligence? So it is very useful in this whole process to understand a little bit the dynamics and the power of thought. Because emotions, feelings, they are connected with our thoughts and our thought patterns. And uh, do you know that almost 90% of our thoughts are cyclical? 90% of our thoughts, sometimes even more, are the same repetitive thoughts over and over again. And then tomorrow again, same. And then day after tomorrow, same. <clears throat> and it's very useful to observe this within the self, that we usually don't use our mental potential and our power to think to be very creative. <laughs> we don't use it to be very creative. Most of us just have the same, same uh, set of thoughts over and over again. And then many times it is also compulsively. We do not necessarily want to think those thoughts, but they just kind of push themselves upon us. So part of Emotional intelligence is to become more aware of the quality of your thought. And uh, to begin to, you know, many of us, we are so externally oriented. We know what others think, what they will do, what they will say, how they will respond. Often much better than what is going on inside ourselves. <laughs> Because we're so focused on others or on situations externally. So one part of spiritual intelligence is to become more focused on self. And one area that is very useful to become more aware of and monitor more in terms of quality is our own mind. And mind is one of the functions within the psyche, within the consciousness. This is our mind. One of the things that our mind does is thoughts appear. In this, on, our, in, on the screen of our mind, certain thoughts ap appears. <clears throat> this is symbol for a thought. Now, You know what is a thought? You have an idea, no? Some thought comes, oh, it is late, it is cold, I am hungry, <laughs> I want to go to meditate. These are thoughts, and they kind of almost like pop up sometimes, or many times. Or I want what? I want hot soup, I want soup, I want soup, same thing comes. Thoughts, they as if rule in a... a, a flood our mind constantly. And we have thousands and thousands and thousands of thoughts in a day. So even if your body doesn't move, there are all kinds of thoughts. So even if you don't do anything physically, you get tired. Why? <laughs> you get tired thinking thoughts. <laughs> Now, every thought carries with it a certain energy, you could say, and a certain vibration, a certain energy. It can be, for example, uh, I'm hungry can be a, a, the, the energy of uh, feeling low or feeling uh, a lack, uh, uh, the thought of uh, what, I want to go meditate, it carries with it the energy of maybe some sort of relief, 
or a feeling of calm. So every thought brings with it a certain energy and creates an atmosphere. in your mind. So if you, for example, have the thought, I hate my boss, just an example, I hate my boss, that carries the energy of a bit of anger, a bit of uh, uh, hyper, a bit of aggression. So I, that thought creates within my mind an atmosphere of a bit of uh, hatred. If I have that thought 20 times, 20 times I infuse my mind with an atmosphere, with energy of, of hatred. And even if it is just at a thought level, but some form of violence and rejection. <clears throat> Every thought carries with it a certain feeling certain feelings, and certain emotions. So like, uh, I hate my boss. Even <laughs> saying it, you kind of feel the energy of it and the feelings and the emotions. And then if you visualize in your mind the face of your boss, it may even be worse. <laughs> and then if you maybe remember all the things he did and said and whatever, it becomes even worse. You may not even be in front of your boss. You may not even have seen him the whole week. You may be on vacation and you haven't seen him for a month. But just the thought creates this whole <laughs> hype in your mind. Hmm? Every thought carries with it a certain in, uh, attitude. If this thought is, I hate my boss, the attitude will be of rejection. The attitude will be of uh, non-cooperation. The attitude will maybe even with a look of drop that kind of a thing. Because every thought and attitude also becomes manifest in our eyes. And the vision and the outlook that we have. But if this thought and these emotions of hatred are within my mind, whom does that benefit? Does it benefit you to have hatred? No. Nobody benefits. But who suffers the most? The one who carries these thoughts and these emotions and these feelings. They might be completely justified because your boss may be definitely a person who is not likable. So they may be completely justified. But whose detriment is it having these thoughts and these feelings? Myself, isn't it? And what also happens <clears throat> if this energy fills my mind repetitively, what happens when I go home after work? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you will be irritable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then you bring that energy of irritation and anger and irritability and you bring that home. Boss is not at home. <laughs> and home is, is uh, some family member and whoever, whatever is there. But then they now having to deal with your vibration and energy of hatred and anger. And you yourself are carrying, you know, in these cartoons, they used to show somebody walking with cloud all the time. <laughs> dark cloud and <laughs> so that is you carrying that and whoever comes close to you they also get some of that <laughs> now is this intelligent 
<laughs> not very intelligent. And for any task, and in case of emotions, in any relationships, we would prefer people who are intelligent. Even if it is just a, a colleague interaction, not even colleague, even if it is somebody at the store helping you, you would prefer them to be intelligent because otherwise they may show you some wrong thing, tell you, sell you some wrong thing. If you need a gardener, you would prefer an intelligent gardener, otherwise you will keep your plants. <laughs> if a taxi driver, you would prefer an intelligent taxi driver because otherwise the whole thing gets a mess. So in any situation in life, it is useful to be, in this context, emotionally intelligent. Now, what would that emotional intelligence be? <clears throat> when we can consciously choose to not nurture these self-destructive thoughts, these undermining thoughts. Now, that doesn't mean I ignore. That doesn't mean I am, what is the word? I am not... Uh, attentive, but to linger on these thoughts and then create all kinds of emotions that are not useful. <clears throat> that is not good. Now for this, we need to learn to discern. And this is what was meant also, you stop, you pause, you think, you discern, is this thought useful or is this thought, trend of thinking, is it useful? Is this trend of feelings and emotions, is this constructive or not? Because... This is one of our powers that no one can take away from us. We can choose to shift our thoughts, but we need to pay attention and we need to kind of train ourselves. <clears throat> and if we don't uh, pay attention, then we are just, a victim of habitual thinking. If we don't pay attention and uh, as if teach ourselves gently and kindly what kind of thoughts and feelings are useful, then we become a victim of uh, whatever happens externally. That then decides what I think. I react to whatever happens, what people say, what people do, what situation, because I'm not using my power to discern. But we all have the choice what to think, how to think. <clears throat> and I can choose. Because I can choose what kind of thought patterns to nurture, I can thereby choose my attitude, my feelings, my emotions. And so spiritual, uh, uh, emotional intelligence would be to choose those type of thoughts that nurture an atmosphere in the mind that is of lightness, that is of calm, that is of uh, a deeper contentment, of equanimity, as Varsha was saying, those type of thoughts that create feelings and emotions that are more balanced, that are more, what is it, harmonious also. <clears throat> now, who benefits when I do that? Everyone 
but the mostly you yourself. <clears throat> and so part of a, a spiritual journey is to pay attention to what is going on inside. Just as when you walk on the street, you pay attention. People walking, where they walking, how they walking, that you don't bump into them. Where is the traffic light? You have to stop. No car. You pay attention. The same way, pay attention to what is going on, the traffic of your mind. And we do not realize often how important this is for our life's experience, for our sense of self-control, and for the quality also of our daily life's activities. <clears throat> because often enough, this mind just goes on an automatic mode, some habitual thinking. And that habitual thinking is often formed by what is the public norm and what other people do and think and say and feel or what is going on on television or some video, whatever. We don't want to be heard. How do you say that? Uh, herd animals. You say like that? We don't want to be part of a herd mentality. <clears throat> If the herd goes in the right direction, no problem, I can join. But <laughs> they go into the slaughterhouse. You don't want to just go with them just because they all go there. Hmm? So this power to discern our thoughts and then to decide to shift is is a very useful power. And at any moment, we can say, stop. What do you say? Stop. Observe and shift. S-O-S. -S. Stop, observe, shift or steer in a different direction. You can do that with a car. Why can't you do that with your own mind? Stop, observe, and shift. Stop, observe, steer. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So someone here is asking, how do you train yourself to stop? Is when you get a feel that something is not right, when you feel low, for example, or when you begin to feel, sometimes this spinning, you just loudly say, I, that is how I do it, loudly say to myself, stop this trend of thoughts. I observe what is going on and I consciously choose another topic to think about. If I can't do that just in my mind, I physically involve in an activity that shifts my mind. If it is really bad, for example, sports is something that is very useful. You just go run a few blocks. <laughs> <laughs> things uh, or what in my case helps is I, I take uh, an uplifting book or text and I start reading that and if I if the spinning is so much that I can't really read I start just writing what that text says just as if making my mind Think what I'm writing, shifting the thoughts. If you have easy access to good company and a good conversation, that also helps shift. And more we do this, more we create that power 
to stop, even just by saying it. Because you start noticing, when am I going off track? Stop, observe, and choose a different direction. S-O-S. S-O-S. <laughs> Mind is going wild. <clears throat> and this is also what you train during meditation. No? And with meditation, you're constant, consciously choosing spiritual thoughts. More you choose that, more you create that power to stop, shift, different direction. Can you? Took the classes here maybe over 10 years ago, and I just wanted to add that Part of training your mind to shift uh, these tools you work on uh, are taught here at the classes and mm -hmm. by coming here weekly and, and learning in a group and then going home and practicing and discussing. It's like exercise or anything yeah. else. And after a while, you start to pick up. Um, so like for me, this is a good refresher. Very good. Um, and so yeah. I just wanted to add, add that. Yeah. Very good. <clears throat> Very good. So... Emotional intelligence is when you begin to become aware of what is happening in your mind and begin to take action to use this power to discern, use this power to decide, to shift your thoughts and thereby shift your feelings. Now, the, the art is to do this when the going is good. So that when there is a provocative situation, you already have some inner control. Because when the situation is provocative and you are weak, then you will just be swept away and three nights you won't be able to sleep and all kind of <laughs> whatever, whatever goes on <laughs> until it just gradually slows down. But to train this, with train means experiment with this, play with this on a regular basis. And what I used to do is I would have a, a how do you call that, a, a journal, a, a diary, but for my thoughts. I would say, okay, today, what percentage of cyclical thoughts that I have? Just uh, roughly. What percentage of destructive thoughts that I had, useless thoughts and destructive thoughts? What percentage of constructive thoughts that I have? Just to get an idea. And more that I do that, I become more aware during the day also. This is a useless thought. This is waste thinking. And if you know your thought power is your energy, your mental energy. If you waste it, what will happen? You cannot focus on the things that are important, but also you get tired. Doing nothing, just useless thinking. <laughs> you get exhausted. <laughs> you get exhausted and you get old, just useless thinking uselessly the whole day. This is like as if wasting our life. Hmm? <clears throat> so uh, emotional intelligence is to choose the right thoughts and thereby create the constructive, the harmonious feelings. <clears throat> feelings and thoughts that are aimed at solution instead of problem. And, but there is something higher than that. And I'll give an example. Some of you may have heard me ask this. Uh, what is this? 
You know already, some of you have heard me say this, this hand is here and the skin is here. And there may be some flesh and bones and some uh, arteries and veins and nerves, but it is also a miracle. You see a miracle? Or do you just see a hand making movement? What is here? This is another one, another miracle. These eyes, this is a miracle. This nose is another miracle. Ear is another miracle. What is this? This is a man-made miracle. Zoom, another man-made miracle. I don't know, people from all over the world can join and we can communicate. This life is full of miracles, but we don't see often the miracle because our mind is clogged with this repetitive, cyclical, and even destructive thoughts or thoughts about other people, what they are doing, what they're not doing. And most of it is not even true. It's just my imagination about them. <laughs> we project our thoughts on them. And I spend our life just thinking about other Useless, mind is clogged because of not having that broader, that higher perspective. And that is where spiritual intelligence comes in. Having a broader and bigger perspective on life and on self, that we can approach things from that sense of wonder and that sense of amazement and that sense of miracle. Someone was mentioning the subway, but the subway system of New York City is a miracle in itself. <laughs> Now when I go to Grand Central, I, you get lost. So many tracks and so many things to go. And amazing. Millions of people get transported there. This is like, a, wow. But we don't have the mindset and that inner attitude and that vision to see like that. Well, they say the difference between an optimist and a pessimist. No? Uh, an optimist says, good God, good morning, God. And a pessimist says, good God, morning. <laughs> Same morning, <laughs> but inner attitude is different. <laughs> huh? Now, <clears throat> in spiritual intelligence, we aim to hold a bigger picture and not get stuck in one situation or in one thought or in a thought pattern. Aim to see the biggest picture possible. <clears throat> Very often, when we think of ourselves and our life, we think of this. Uh, and this is female, but I mean, just we think of our physical appearance and the things around. And so there may be friends, relatives, and the boss, and the colleagues, mm -hmm. <laughs> and the neighbors. <laughs> and then we think of our, what, our job, we think of our money, uh, we think of our vacation coming up. What else do we think about? Sorry, I can't draw very well. This is our cell phone. <laughs> cell phone and all the data in your contacts. <laughs> contacts and your TikTok account and your Facebook account and your <laughs> Instagram account. And uh, what else is there? 
and hobbies. Maybe your uh, uh, possessions, maybe some apartment or some house or your pets or some sport or some culture, music. And we think this is me and this is I and this is mine. This is my life. Hmm? <clears throat> and all our thoughts are about this. And maybe for some a bit more limited about this. Uh, our cyclical thoughts around money are another area very important. You know what is this? Pizza, oh, yeah? I love pizza. <laughs> pizza slice. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> I know people who all the time, all they only think about food. <laughs> food, 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 food. So all these thousands of thoughts, we can identify just a few categories where most of these thoughts fall into. That is very limited use of our abilities. And it is also a very limited perspective on self and on life. Spiritual intelligence means you are not stuck here in, in any way. You're not stuck in some attachment or some false identity or some ego about some position. Because all of these things, they may change anytime. They may stop anytime. And they may change unpredictably. Anything can change here. And it doesn't ask your permission to change also. So to not be vulnerable and subjective to all kinds of feelings and emotions and insecurities and anxieties, we need to have a bigger perspective. <clears throat> and this is where spiritual intelligence comes in. Spiritual intelligence says all of this is extra. Is an extra experience. You, the real you, is an invisible experiencer, a being of consciousness. <clears throat> the invisible experiencer who uses this body who uses the brain, who uses the mind to create thoughts and feelings. And this invisible experiencer transcends any of this, even the body. Body is like a vehicle. Soul, the invisible experiencer, is the driver of this vehicle. And just like a car, you go in and you go out, same. So comes in, and at some stage in time, expiry date of the vehicle, so continues. And the real you is the soul. And so spiritual intelligence is to hold that awareness of the self as a spiritual being, timeless, invisible living consciousness. <clears throat> and this is an extra experience. And there are many, you could also say is an extra gain. The soul comes into a body, into the physical world to play a game. And there are many, many, many toys. Many toys to play with. Very sophisticated toys. This body, very sophisticated toy, toy, a miraculous toy, toy, a toy. 
But one thing that in spiritual intelligence is clear, that nothing here is mine. Nothing. I don't know how to say that. Nothing is mine. In spiritual intelligence, there is not a sense of possession or ownership, but there is the feeling of trusty and on loan. No? So this body has been given to me on loan. by nature, the, in the, the, the elements of nature. They give me this body on loan. And what is the characteristic of borrowing? It's not mine and I will have to give it back at some stage. If you go to the library and you get a book to borrow, after a few weeks, you have to give it back. It's not mine. You don't go and write your name. <laughs> mine, put it in your, on your shelf, mine. No, you have it on loan. But having it on loan doesn't mean I cannot enjoy it. Having it on loan doesn't mean I cannot uh, use it, care for it use it properly, enjoy it. No, all of that I can do. Just I don't get into this mind. And because I don't get into this mind, I don't get into bondage and this and disillusionment. <clears throat> and I don't get into the anxiety to lose, which is a very important thing. Spiritual intelligence is to hold that attitude of a visitor, visitor or a player. We come to play this game, but we are eternal, timeless beings of consciousness. And to have that approach, traveler approach, travelers, they are very wise, a true, the one who really has the traveler attitude is very wise. They don't carry any junk. They don't carry any useless <laughs> because your baggage has to be light. <laughs> and a traveler enjoys what is there in the moment. Though they come to New York City, they don't expect to find Miami Beach here. So they, they, they don't come with expectations and that there will be, no, this is, New York City is different. There is the Empire State Building, there is Macy's and there is a twin, the, the, what is it, Freedom Tower and there are all these skyscrapers. And then when they go to where? to Boston, they don't expect to find the Statue of Liberty there. Boston is different. And everything has its own value. Everything has its own, every scene has its own beauty and lessons to learn. But you don't hold on to, oh, I'm going to Boston, so I have to carry New York City with me. <laughs> so this traveler attitude, towards life. Every scene is new, every scene is different, every scene has its lessons, every scene has its own opportunities. But also you let go. The traveler doesn't go and say, this is my empire state building and I cannot <laughs> live without it. <laughs> and get stuck on it and feels depressed when he has to go somewhere else. No. Spiritual intelligence is to <clears throat> appreciate every scene and move on. It's like clouds. They come. You don't say, oh, this is my cloud. 
put the name tag on <laughs> my cloud. No, they come and they go, come and they go. <clears throat> Internally free. Because you hold that bigger perspective. And there is a, another uh, angle to this. The soul has come from another dimension. The dimension beyond matter, the dimension of silence, of light. Well, what is remembered as nirvana or the dimension beyond, we have come from the soul world playing this game and ultimately we will end back up going back home again. <clears throat> So holding that bigger perspective, and there are more details to this. This is what is spiritual intelligence. Not get trapped or stuck here in the, my dog, my dog. I can't live without my dog. I can't exist without my dog. My identity has become my dog. We as if limit ourselves. Okay, anyone want to say anything, ask anything? <laughs> this is a sigh. <laughs> Can you read what the person says? Om Shanti, all these questions are great, but absolutely love today's discussion. Thank you, sister. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, yes. Yeah. yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, very good. Yeah, of course, the science is one of the big, uh, what is it? Achievements, the uh, great thinkers of today. But at the same time, I would encourage each and every one, do your own research in this. It is nice if silence corroborates this or not. <laughs> but at the same time, it will become useful for you if you experiment with it and begin to get a hold on this and begin to enhance your discerning power, your decision power, broaden your perspective. <clears throat> and there is this question, why are we here to play the game? Um, this is, it transcends a little bit our lecture. For that, it, I would encourage you to uh, explore the course, the course in meditation. We go more in depth of that. But one comment, maybe two comments even to make. We do find ourselves here at this moment. It's not like we have a choice. We are in this middle of this game. So we might as well figure out how to play it right and how to deal with it in a way that it doesn't become a war or a, 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 a what is it, a jail <laughs> or, 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 or some horrible experience. We are here, we find ourselves here. So it is our each one's own responsibility to figure out how to play it right. Uh, and But another aspect of this is maybe innately we are meant to play. You know, why do human beings love games? 
I always used to wonder how come the newspapers or news, so much news is around sports games. People enjoy playing sports, they enjoy watching sports, they enjoy listening to the stories of sports. Somewhere deeper inside of us, there is a natural instinct to play. Babies, what they do if they're not sick or nothing, they're naturally playing. And if they're not playing, they're sick. It means something is wrong. It is part of our instinct as a being to play. But we have lost perspective of the game and we have forgotten the rules of this game. So this game now has become <laughs> a horror film, a horror movie. <laughs> so part of spiritual intelligence is begin to see again the dynamics and the understandings and learn again, retake again charge of the self and of the game. But deeper dynamics, I would say this goes beyond a lecture. <laughs> but think of this, our natural instinct is actually to play. Okay. How is Raj Yoga different than taking, talking to a therapist? I don't know. I haven't gone to a therapist. <laughs> I, I think a therapist doesn't necessarily um, gives you spiritual tools and spiritual perspective and uh, deeper explorations of there may be therapists who have spiritual inclinations and use that partly but another aspect a therapist you have to pay <laughs> spiritual wisdom is your birthright is your spiritual inheritance you have a right to understand these things and to be in control again of the self. You become your own therapist, someone is saying here. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Goes down, yeah. It regulates the emotions and in the system, they do it for the emotions. So it regulates the emotions. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Mm. 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 And at that time, I felt they really do not have much of answers to chronic problems because I felt at that time they ignore the existence of consciousness. And uh, <clears throat> but certain aspects you can only discover yes. for yourself for yourself. I mean, it is nice they can make some photos of the brain, but your own personal benefit will be when you experiment with it. Okay, so let's close because we're already over time. Um, 
We can go on all night, but we won't. <laughs> Let's have a, a minute. Just as if become aware of that non-physical, invisible you. The being of consciousness. Timeless, immortal, invisible experiencer. The one who is operating this body. The soul. And we can use this image of light like a tiny star operating the body as if from the center of the forehead, behind the eyes, using the eyes to see, using the mouth to speak. But that living light that being of consciousness is the real self. A guest in this body. A guest on this planet. A player of the game. Thank you. <clears throat> Appreciating very much all of you here at the center and all of you on Zoom. Thank you for your participation, attention, and uh, um, not this weekend, but the weekend after that, there is a two-day meditation course so those who have interest, Saturday and Sunday, um, basics of meditation and starting a meditation practice, you're most welcome. But also, we would like to invite you to spread the word. Not like I said to Krishnan, this is for free. You don't have to pay. Therapist, you have to pay. <laughs> So help spread the word that people can learn to meditate for free. We are here, the center is here, and we would like to serve as many as possible to take benefit from this. You can go on our website, you can go on Facebook, on Instagram, our flyer is there. Just forward it to all your contacts. It would be very helpful to just make people aware of the center. And every Thursday, we are here. Except Thanksgiving Thursday. But that's the only Thursday in the year that the center is closed. Thank you. And good night. <laughs>